Good morning. Thank you, Joanne Keys. Let's have a hand for Joanne. Good morning and welcome to Unity of Jupiter. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, grandmothers, stepmothers. Very special day. It is a very special day because we have a special uh, guest, Mr. Charlie Thweet, who... Uh, Charlie will be uh, doing the, the meditation, the message, and providing some music during the service today. And then uh, after the service, we have a special workshop led by Charlie on A Course in Miracles. So if you are, uh, you know, if you enjoy this A Course in Miracles, or even if you're not familiar with it, I think this is a good opportunity to get familiarized with it. And I should also mention that Charlie has his merch table over here with lots of goodies, CDs, uh, beanies, cookbooks, just everything you could possibly imagine. Kitchenware. Kitchenware. <laughs> uh, okay, I think we can get started. Let's all stand up and join together in singing our gathering song, My Soul is Welcome Here. Just where I'm supposed to be 
remain standing and Charlie Thweed is going to lead us in our congregational song, Spirit of Joy. I understand you did this last week. So you're just going to do it next week? And then forever more? And no, I'm kidding. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, start playing, plugging in. I'm going to switch the mics over here. So, cool. So, um, I just want to say this song uh, has ministered to me, just to remind me why I'm here, and um, that it's up to me. So this is called Spirit of Joy. I'm taking my time and making a choice that I am the one in charge of my joy. And yes, I believe in a spirit of good that helps me to walk where I never would. You can do this part. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Back to the top. I'm taking my time. Making a choice that I am the one in charge of my joy. And yes, I believe in a spirit of good that helps me to walk where I never would. Next slide, John. steady peace spirit of life is always here reminding me reminding me spirit of joy that's what I'll call you spirit of steady peace spirit of life is always here reminding me reminding me reminding me Reminding me, reminding me, reminding me, reminding me, reminding me, reminding me. Thank you. Have a seat. You know what? I think it's the perfect time for you to come up. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and happy Mother's Day. Whatever, if you're a mother of a furry pet <laughs> or a uh, flesh one. We congratulate you today. Thank you for coming. So in case you don't know, my name is Reverend Maureen Collin, and I'm one of your board members. Let's start today by affirming our unity of Jupiter core value, abundant prosperity. We believe, we believe that God is our source of all good. Today's daily word is blessings for mothers. So we're going to affirm that. It's not there? Okay, so we'll do core values then. <laughs> All right, let's recite together our core value. We believe that God is our source of all good. I'm waiting for the daily word. So today's daily word is a blessing for mothers, and we affirm, I bless all mothers with thoughts of gratitude. There's nothing quite like a mother's love, so nurturing, caring, and warm. 
Today, I bless the women in my life who express this love in all they do, whether it's the woman who raised me or any of the other women I know who so generously shared a mother's love. I have felt the care of God through their tender touch and encouraging words. Over the years, I have grown strong and confident under the kind of direction and have relied upon their wisdom. The divine feminine flourishes on earth in the loving words and caring hands of mothers and all those who share a mother's love. I bless them and pray with them. I pray that they know the love of God as they have shared it so generously with me. Today's daily word is inspired by 2 Kings. Then the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave without you. So, whichever mic. Um, I want to welcome, welcome everyone uh, this morning, and uh, happy Mother's Day again. And I want to ask, are there any uh, people here for the first time? Would you be willing to raise your hand? Okay. Great. Wonderful. Welcome. And uh, I've been told to say this phrase, which I think is very cute. Unity of Jupiter is an out-of-this-world, down-to-earth, spiritual community creating heaven on earth. Now, who knows how to say that without, with your eyes closed? Anyone? <laughs> Let's do it again, see if you can catch up. Unity of Jupiter is an out-of-this-world, down-to-earth, spiritual community creating heaven on earth. I love that. So welcome, and we won't make you stand up and tell us your names, but um, please uh, feel free to stay afterwards, and I think there's some food and beverages you can get to meet some people here. Um, this week's affirmation, I know we got a little bit of out of order here. There it is. Uh, we're going to say, I'll read it first and we can say it together. I am connected with myself and with God. Let's say that together. I am connected with myself and with God. Okay, great. So we're going to invite Maureen back up. We'll do some announcements. You're all just rolling with this, right? <laughs> All right, our first announcement is about A Course in Miracles. <laughs> and it is with Reverend Maureen Cohen and every Monday at 7 p.m. And we would love to have you join us. Even if you've never attended before, you'll receive something that night. So I hope to see you there. And then the first Friday of every month, the Healing Circle with Carolyn Cohen is at 7.30 p.m. Wednesdays at noon is our weekly midday prayer group led by Pam Shulston and the prayer chaplains. And then every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m., we have the Harmony Exercise Meditation with Reverend John Denny. So our guest speakers for the rest of the month of May are Reverend John Denny, who's going to be here next Sunday, May 21st. Then Hank Lewis, licensed Unity teacher, will be here on May 28th. You may remember him from the Burning Bowl service. So far in June, our speakers are Reverend John on June 4th and 18th. And don't forget, July 11th, Reverend Diane Robinson will be back with us. Did I, what month did I say? Well, maybe she'll come in July too. Okay, so then on Saturday, May 27th at 7 p.m., Amy Steinberg will be here uh, live in concert. We have tickets on sale here. They're $20, so please get your tickets early so that we can plan. It will be amazing. You're just going to love her. Uh, so as I said, tickets are right on sale right here. And just to give you a sample of what Amy sounds like, we're going to give you a little sample of her music.
ride. <laughs> okay. All right, so now we're going to have our meditation, and I'd like to introduce Charlie to come back and get us started. We're going to use this song to go into a time of meditation. And I'll invite you to sing on the chorus. And this is called We Go Together. Let's close our eyes. And at the end of the song, we'll have a moment of silence. And then after that, I'll lead you in a little guided meditation. We go together We go together We go together As one Will you sing that with me? We go together We go together we go together as one in the beginning there was God and God is all there. Then we divided, divided up, yet we're still one because, sing with me, we go together, we go together. We go together as one. We go together. We go together. We go together as one.
we go together. All part of that same whole. And it's true. When we get this, we will be free. Free from the illusion of separation. Free from the need to compete. The need to win. To be against each other. We are all part of one whole. And when we get that, we can relax. We go together. I am spirit. You are spirit. There's no separation in spirit. On this Mother's Day, we remember we all come from that same Divine Mother. We're all in that family. And the gifts of being in this family are that place of peace at our center, that place of knowing, place of stillness. We can always go home to that stillness that rests at the center of each of us. I am spirit. I am stillness. I am peace. I am oneness. Not only do we go together as parts of a puzzle, but we go together forward as one. Bring that oneness to every moment in your life. Operate from oneness. Operate from being joined. Bend fences. We go together. There's a power in the wind that will sail you home to the peace you know within. When you sing your song, all of nature will join in to bless you in your mission here on earth, to help you in your service here on earth. When you sing your song, you can feel the rising tide lifting all things up and there's nowhere left to hide. When you sing your song, you become alive inside to bless you in your mission here on earth to help you in your service here on earth so you ask 
past the rising tide and the power in the wind and you know that there's no way you could ever fail and you call When you sing your song, there's a power in the wind that will sail you home to the peace you know within. When you sing your song, all of nature will join in to bless you in your mission here on earth. To help you in your service here on earth. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. Thank you. I believe we are, well, just join me. Let's close our eyes and join me in the words of our Lord's Prayer, would you? Let your eyes close. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have. not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. So um, I've taken you pretty far in. Let me just invite you to stretch your arms, kind of feel your body again. We'll come back to the room. Let's, uh, let's do the wave like on American Idol. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Welcome back. Um, <clears throat> my talk today, it's about connection, and that's partly why I chose uh, some of the songs I've been doing. <clears throat> um, and I'll go into that in a little bit later. Um, so my title, is it, is it up on the board? Did I give it to you, John? So it's Living in Connection, or and Are You on God's Wi-Fi? There you are, Living in Connection, Are You on God's Wi-Fi? Um, yep, that's me. <laughs> that's me in a lobby of a hotel in Rome. Every now and then I'll get out my guitar in unexpected places and have a good time. Um, so what, I, what I'm going to do today is look at three areas of connection in our lives and how we can maybe see if we get more full bars on our Wi-Fi connection in life. And uh, what I'm also um, going to bring in is, is dueling quotes. So for each section I have dueling quotes between the Buddha and Mark Twain. So it'll be fun to share that as well. So the first area I want to look at, um, I'm going to, it's connection with self. I want to call that my inner net, I-N-N-E-R. So beginning on our inner net. And a lot of times, you know, in like the song I just sang, I don't know if you caught the words, when you sing your song, which is a metaphor for really stepping into giving your gifts, you know, what did you come to do? And maybe what do you still have remaining to do while you're here? So when you sing your song, there's a power in the wind that will sail you home to the peace you know within. When you sing your song, all of nature will join in to help you in your mission here on earth, your service here on earth. And you've heard this before. There's a great Goethe, you know, quote attributed to Goethe about you know, providence moves too. When you commit, then providence shows up and helps. It's the same message. 
And I love there's a line in that song that says, and if you do it, you can never fail. And I don't think you can fail. If you, if you step into doing what you might say God has given you to do, how could you fail at that? I mean, it's, it's been given to you. This is what you came to do. So there's going to be a way. There's going to be a way. Uh, and my story is that I grew up loving music, got to college, decided to get a practical degree in architecture, didn't love it, worked at it for three years, and then escaped my cubicle. And, and it, was, it took a little bit of courage to do that, because to, to, uh, it was safe. I had my regular paycheck, my benefits package, and, um, and I was dying a slow death. And I remember I used to lovingly call it my, my slow death with benefits. <laughs> and I, but then my internet was telling me, this is, this is not your place. You know, this music is your gift, and just go for it. Take a leap. And that was crazy. That's a crazy thing to do. And my, I remember my aunt coming to see me. She's a little more conservative. She was not a unity person. She came and and saw one of my concerts, and she, afterwards she made this comment kind of out of the side of her mouth, you know, your, your grandpa would roll over in his grave if he knew you had an architecture degree, and now you're going around singing for love offerings. <laughs> but it's what my heart called me to do. And so when we tune into the Internet, this, I'm talking about connection with self, getting to know who we are. It's also about listening, you know, what's, what's true for me, and I want to bring in the word integrity. You know, we, we often think integrity means you don't lie, don't steal, you know, be honest and all that. But how about being honest with ourselves? Maybe part of integrity is saying, no, this isn't right for me, or this is what's right for me. No, this doesn't bring me joy. Yes, this brings me joy. And I, I want to ask you a question. Do, do you feel like you're really in your power if you're not in your joy? Probably not. And when you, when you are like in a direction that brings you joy, you probably really do feel in your power. You know, so it's an invitation if, if you're a little bit off track. Uh, my friend Alan Cohen wrote a book, Joy is My Compass. Isn't that a great title? You know, let that be your north arrow. You know, where's, what direction are you being pulled? You know, what's, what's it telling you? So you, if you're not feeling in your power, not feeling your joy, maybe a little course correction. I have also noticed a great way to get in touch with our internet. Oh, first I want to uh, share a, a, a Mark Twain quote because um, I talked about that courage to be in integrity with who I am. You know, it took courage to leap and start to tour Unity Churches full time with no obvious, you know, um, means of support, but just step out and have it work anyway. And there's a great quote from Mark Twain I found. He says, with courage, you dare to take risks, to have the strength to be compassionate, and the wisdom to be humble. Courage is the foundation of integrity. Courage is the foundation of integrity. Sometimes we have to be brave to step into who we are when maybe other people are fighting it or we think they don't want us to be a certain way. Maybe we're just making that up too. Courage is the foundation of integrity. So maybe you, there's a leap in your life that maybe you're looking at, or, what, or how can I be more in line with who I really am? So anyway, the last way I want to look at in this first section on the inner net of how uh, we stay in touch with ourselves is meditation. And I've been a meditator. I've been not a meditator. I've been a meditator again. Lately, I'm not meditating a lot, but... Uh, I will tell you that it's a great way of just hanging out with the soul of me. Just to close our eyes and just kind of be in that place. And, you know, my wife hates meditating. She can't, it drives her crazy. She, she can't sit still. And, and she, what's bothering her is that all these thoughts going by. And maybe you've had the same thing. And there's a great metaphor of, of maybe to reframe that and just where you imagine you're sitting by a stream and the water is slowly going by. So you're the one, you're on the stream on the solid bank and, and the water's going by and on the, on the surface are these leaves 
you know, just leaves on the surface slowly going by. And the leaves I th could represent the thoughts, your thoughts. You have all these thoughts going by, and you're just sitting there watching the leaves, watching the leaves. Well, maybe don't identify with the leaves, but identify with that person sitting on the shore in stillness in just this place of peace. And often we just get caught up in, in the leaves going by instead of the person watching. So maybe that's a metaphor that will help you. I, um, I found a funny quote. I, was, I, have, the, uh, I have a Sirius XM uh, radio, and on the comedy channel, a, a comedian named Joe Zimmerman, he said this. I had to stop and write it down. I was driving. He said, I've been trying to learn to meditate. I didn't realize that all you do is sit quietly with your eyes closed and worry about everything. <laughs> So in, in that context, I'm going to bring in a, court from a, cor a quote from A Course in Miracles. Uh, in the introduction, it says, uh, nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists. Nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists. And maybe reframe those thoughts going by, those leaves, as the unreal. It's just, you know, you are not your thoughts. Has anyone ever suggested that to you? You are not your thoughts. Sometimes we think, whatever we're thinking, that must be us. No, it's just stuff going by. So let that be the unreal. Let who you are at peace on the shore be the real. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Not to get lost in that. So, um, so to finish up the inner net, that knowing yourself, the Buddha was asked, what have you gained from meditation? You know what his answer was? He said, nothing. And I like that because it's almost two ways of perceiving that, that uh, answer. I, I, got, I, didn't get, I didn't get anything from it, and I got a beautiful place of nothingness, of peace, of emptiness. But anyway, he goes on. He replied, what have you gotten from meditation? Nothing. However, let me tell you what I have lost. Anger, anxiety, depression, insecurity, and fear of old age and death. It's a great answer. Just let all the unreal wash away. Okay, so my next section, uh, connection with others, I'm going to call that the intranet, you know, the intra connection that we have. And, um, and I want to bring in that song I did for the meditation. I don't know if you caught the words, we go together. In the, in, in the verse I sang, in the beginning there was God, and God is all there was. And then we divide it up. And that's why we go together. And I, I know that, that some concepts are too big for our little human minds to perceive, so we make up some story or some myth to try and put some sort of frame of reference around the impossible to understand. We don't know the big picture of the universe, how it all works, but you know, we make guesses. And a myth that works for me is that in the beginning there was God, and then God was tired of being all there was and wanted somebody to play with. So God divided up into all these little pieces, and here we are, all these little consciousnesses. So that works for me on a lot of levels. And so then I can see that God self in you when I stop and really pause, and maybe you see it in me. And, uh, and we do go together as pieces of that whole, as spirit. Uh, another way I've uh, inter experienced that intranet, that connection with others, is a little experience I was taught many years ago. It's called the looking thing, and it's, it's just simply to look in someone else's eyes in silence. I walked into a workshop once, and, and about halfway through this hour-long workshop, they said, find a partner. I didn't know anybody there. And you turn your chair to face your partner, and now for the next 20 minutes, look in their eyes in silence. And my first thought was, what? I'm going to do what? <laughs> it drove me crazy. It makes me so nervous. And, and, uh, but I, I trusted the, the leaders, so I did it. And uh, uh, mostly it was a lot of leaves going by. You know, thought, 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 thought for 20 minutes. And every now and then momentarily, I felt like I kind of saw a spiritual connection. And then more leaves, more thoughts, you know. And, uh, but at the end, it intrigued me. 
And I ended up doing that exercise. I came back for more workshops, and I did that exercise many times and got to a place where there were fewer thoughts and more of the connection, and it shifted my life. It's like, it's available. This, the, the, the name on the church is not unity for no reason. It's, again, it's about seeing how connected we are. And I can't not see that anymore. So that, that changed my life in seeing that kind of underlying bedrock that connects us, even though we're these separate entities walking around, to see that more deeply, that intranet, interconnection. I was uh, traveling in Hawaii with my wife a few years ago, and we were uh, in Kona and needed to get some groceries. So we went to the Whole Foods, uh, not Whole Foods, but a... a uh, a groovy food store, what a holistic food store there, and uh, and uh, we were going to check out. And I noticed a sign by the register. It said "Wisdom Discount, uh, 55 and over." I thought, oh, I get I get a little wisdom discount. So I walked up, and there's a young guy there, like 23 year old, you know, hippie, long hair, at the, you know, t checking us out, and uh, at the register, and he and I said, hey, and I'd like my wisdom discount, and he said, okay. But first, would you share a little wisdom? Well, that's cute. Okay, yes. And so I, I talked about this connection. I said, well, you know what's been really profound in my life is when I just stop and really take time to connect with someone in the eyes in silence. And he thanked me, and then he connected with me in the eyes in silence for about 30 seconds. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And I got my discount. <laughs> but it was a... It was a great moment, and also to just not be afraid to share, even with a stranger. So I love that. Inter intranet, interconnection. There's a, um, a song I wrote a while back, and, and I love the lyrics. It kind of speaks to this. The, the words go, take your time when you're being with people. What's another minute to you? We keep finding ourselves in each other. Make this time precious in all that you do. And that, just remembering those lyrics makes me, and I get in situations where I go, oh yeah, remember what you said in the song? Like, for instance, I'll be at, at the drugstore and I'm, I've got 10 errands I have to get done before noon. And it's 10 o'clock and I'm on errand number four. And I run into somebody and, it's, and they want to talk and I, I got six more errands, you know. And, but then I go, no, wait, stop. You can take a few minutes. And just stop and be. And then, then move on. You know, this is not you. When you were up in, in the spirit world before coming into this life, did you say, oh, I can't wait to get to earth to go do a bunch of errands? <laughs> no, we came here to be with each other. Intranet. We're connected. So... Um, So Mark Twain said, and, uh, oh, nope, that's not the right one. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. Well, I left out a story. I know I'm, we're kind of starting to eat up some time here, but um, real quickly I'll say that there's a, a, a workshop I led in San Diego where I actually had uh, people do a thing where you where one person shares while the other just listens and then you take and then you switch and what's beautiful is when when you're doing that when you're just listening and you you've been assigned to just listen is you get to turn off a part that you're normally doing which is I don't know about you if you're in conversation if someone's talking you're also busy preparing your next comment which means you've taken a percentage of your mind away from just being with this person so if you can just let go of that and just listen, that's also how we stay connected because you're actually really taking in what they're saying instead of preparing your next clever remark or to, or to prove that you're listening. Yes, I heard you because you said, no, just, just be. And often, even when they stop talking, what if you didn't say anything? You know, maybe, maybe in their sharing, something is, something's being processed and like, give it 15 seconds, and then something else bubbles up in them. Because sometimes people sharing is part of their own self-discovery. They're, they're learning in the process of thinking things through. 
you know, laying their cards out. So anyway, I did this exercise uh, at a workshop, and I do it often, but in this particular case, you know, afterwards I say, anyone like to share what happened? And there's a husband and wife that have been married 20 plus years, and he said, I'd like to share. He said, I had a miracle. For the first time in over 20 years, I got to speak uninterrupted for five minutes. <laughs> so that's funny, but there's also a beautiful truth in that, just to let someone just run with it for a while. And that, and that does add to our connection. It adds to how we can really be with each other. So now this quote makes sense. Mark Twain, Mark Twain said, Wisdom is the reward you get for a lifetime of listening when you would rather have talked. Isn't that beautiful? Wisdom is the reward you get for a lifetime of listening when you would rather have talked. And then the Buddha said, and this is just, you know, often friends feel more like family than some family members, and that's, that is about how we are connected with each other. And he simply said, a trusted friend is the best relative. A trusted friend is the best relative. Okay, so first the internet connects to self, then the internet with others, and finally the internet, I'm spelling with an E, with God. We enter into that connection with God. So E-N-T-E-R. And the, for me, the biggest way we do this is with being open to guidance. How can I open myself? Because we, we're often in situations where we think, God, what would you have me do? What, what am I going to do in this situation? And, and it's, it's a powerful thing to ask it and, be, and to be willing to listen and see if you hear something. And if you do, I mean, you asked and you heard, so, but sometimes we stumble up upon step three, which is to actually do what we heard to do. So what if you actually did follow your guidance? You know, sometimes we, we ask, we hear an answer, and then we say, do you have any other answers? <laughs> I didn't like that one. <laughs> no, you know, and, and maybe you have this fear, well, what, if I, you know, what if something goes wrong? What if I stumble, I stumble and fall because I followed this voice? Well, you're stumbling and falling anyway. Why not have an experiment of doing it with God, holding God's hand? Say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have faith. I'm going to trust and step into listening for guidance and following it. You know, enter into that relationship. You know, be on God's Wi-Fi. And, and hopefully the more you do it, the stronger your bars get because the more you practice it, the more you see what works and how you can trust and listening and feeling and intuition and Okay, maybe that's not it, not it. Maybe that is it. Um, I had an amazing experience where I was listening, and and uh, this happened many years ago. I was uh, in a relationship with a, a woman named Rosie, Rosie, and we lived in Houston, but we're in the on the brink of moving to San Diego, and we just felt like there was energy there. There was uh, a lot of possibility for sharing our spiritual gifts, and. And so we went to do a little scouting mission to find a place to rent in San Diego. Three days we allowed, we drove out, we were going to drive back after three nights. And first day, drove around, nothing was clicking. Second day, nothing was clicking. Third day, nothing. It's like, there's, we're not finding anything. It's like we kept hitting a wall. And, and finally, it was the, the morning that we're going to drive back to Houston and at about like 6 in the morning, I was in that half-awake, half-asleep state. And, uh, you know, I, maybe they call it hypnagogic. I don't know how it's pronounced. But, and we're not quite in the world, not quite, you know, in your dream state. And I heard a voice. And it was very clear. And the voice said, Maureen has a listing for you. And I kind of woke up and went, what just happened? And shook Ro Rosie. Rosie, I just heard a voice. It said, Maureen has a listing for us. And Maureen was a new friend that we'd met in the area, and we knew that she was a real estate agent. So, hey, maybe this is going to work out. And so we waited, you know, till a reasonable hour, called up Maureen, said, hey, we just heard a voice, and she would understand. She was in this community. She, we heard a voice that said, you have a listing for us. And she said, there was silence on the phone, like, well... I, I don't know what this is about. I mean, I am a real estate agent, but I sell condos to millionaires and movie stars. I mean, I don't have rentals. And uh, so we kind of shook our heads and packed up and drove back to Houston. 
and uh, still with the intention of removing. So two weeks later, I'm just sitting around in the evening, kind of scratching my head, thinking, y you don't hear a voice for nothing. There's got to be something to this. I'm, we need to call Maureen. And Rosie agreed. So I called Maureen. And she said, interesting you called. I just decided to move out of my condo rental. And, uh, and it sounds like exactly what you're looking for. I'll tell the landlord, and I'll set it up for you. <laughs> Maureen had a listing for us. <laughs> but it wasn't the path that we thought. You know, We always think, oh, it's going to be a nice and neat. It's going to follow a certain pattern. No. Life is interesting, but you just you hang in. You, you stay connected to that guidance, but you be willing to roll with the punches. It was beautiful. Open to guide. Oh, enter into that relationship. Keep your antenna up to be connected on God's Wi-Fi for the guidance and the messages that are coming. Uh, a book quote from the Buddha: "In the end, only three things matter." How much you loved, how gently you lived, and how gracefully you let go. It's a good example. We let go. So okay, I guess, but then didn't let go, but then let go. It's, you know, it's, it's a little bit of both, just to be available for whatever life is bringing you. And then finally, Mark Twain, he had, had, he had this to say about in the end. I do not fear death. I had been dead for billions and billions of years before I was born. And I had not suffered the slightest inconvenience from it. <laughs> it's not really on topic, but it's a great quote. <laughs> okay, so just to recap, internet, stay connected with yourself by staying in integrity and listening to what's right for you. Joy is my compass. You know, take your power back by following your joy. The intranet, being connected with others, taking time with people when you think you have the next errand to do. You know, having that eye connection. And then finally, being available for guidance, for an inner voice, for any way that messages are coming. And just always dance lightly with it in that process as you stay open to God's Wi-Fi. Thank you. Yeah, I think you did connect us, Charlie. We have a lot of bars going on around here. Yeah. 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 Now, now it's time to move into our celebration of abundance, our opportunity to give back from our financial abundance. Let's begin by reading the Unity of Jupiter Prosperity Blessing together. In a universe overflowing with the abundance of good, we acknowledge God as the source of all our blessings. We affirm our receptivity and acceptance of this good from every direction, known and unknown, expected and unexpected. Our abundant good comes to us now. Thank you, God, and so it is. There are many ways to give. You can drop your gift in the baskets. It'll be going around. You can also text your donation to 561-581-1119 or give by debit or credit card after today's service in our office located off the sanctuary. Most of these options can be set up for automatic recurring giving. To keep our time of giving sacred, I would like you now to take your gift in your hand and bless it. You are planting the seeds to your own prosperity and giving back to God from the abundance that has already been provided for you. Breathe life into your gift and thank God that you have this gift to give. Now affirm with me the offertory blessing. Divine love, love through me blesses, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Opening, opening all the doorways, 
invite you uh, to the workshop. It'll be from, I think, 12 to 1.30, if I'm remembering correctly. And it's called The Heart of A Course in Miracles. And as Michael mentioned, it's great whether you're new to the course or a longtime student, because I do a little different kind of twist on things. And I'll play a few songs, all where I took words from A Course in Miracles, put them to music. I'll do a little bit of uh, explaining the history and the structure of the course. And then there are a couple of workshop exercises I'll get you involved in, so you'll actually experience it. It's not just me talking about it, but you'll experience it from the inside out. Um, also, just want to mention I have the, my CDs over here. First one's 15. After that, every CD is five bucks. Uh, my wife did come out with a healthy, who, who wants some healthy chocolate? <laughs> health, I'd say my wife created a healthy, she's a, a holistic chef, healthy chocolate recipe book. It's called This Chocolate is Ridiculous. And I've, if you want all 18 of my albums for 30 bucks, I have that on thumb drives. And, and lastly, my, my tour for this coming October is almost full. I have two more rooms left if you want to join me uh, on a trip. It'll be, be my 16th time taking people around Italy. It'll be my 61st time flying to Italy. And I, I love that country. I love pe showing people around. So if it's calling to you, uh, pick up one of these flyers, or we can talk about next April as well. Okay, thanks so much. Yes. Oh, we're going to bless the love offering. Let's thank you, God, for all the blessings that flow through us, both that we receive and then that we send back out into the world. We bless these offerings that they may do your work here in the world. And that we be reminded that there's always enough and there's always more. Thank you, God. Amen. So where are we now? We're going to stand and sing the peace song? Okay, will everyone stand? Can you hold hands as you wish.